Hi, welcome back to Pi Simple GUI 2020, part 10. We're into double digits, generated layouts. There are going to be a couple of concepts that we're going to cover here. One is user-defined elements. And what is meant by that uh, is a function that um, you can put into your layout. So it's so far we've talked about layouts that have uh, elements like text and button and input. User-defined elements means that we're going to create functions that we are going to put directly into this layout. Uh, those functions will return elements uh, so it's it's not like we're creating or using uh, to enter widgets directly something like that it's it's just a term that I, I try to use to describe the, the fact that you are um, creating your own version in a way of an element with with settings so uh, let me get into an example here so we've got a layout here to enter a name address and phone number this is the window and this is the layout it's a nice looking little screen um, there are a few reasons behind that uh, one is that we've right justified our text labels uh, we've used different sized fonts uh, we've made these fixed width so that they all line up real nice uh, and our layout isn't too bad looking, except that it's got a, a lot of parameters, and they're copied over and over again. And if this was a much larger window, it, and, and you had 30 lines of this, then it would just start to look very cluttered. And uh, that's usually in computer science terms at the time to, uh, to refactor and to uh, use a function if you're copying things a lot. So that's what we're going to do here. And so that whenever you create one of these um, user-defined elements, what you want to look at is what is common and what is changing uh, between what, what you're, you're building. In other words, what are the kind of parameters to pass in? So if we were to make one of these rows, well, the things that change are the text and the key. That goes with the input so that will be um, two of the parameters so let's say that we're going to call this uh, in info input info right and it's going to have text and a key and let's take one of these and we're going to return essentially one of those rows right and instead of name here we're going to have text and instead of having a hard-coded key down here we're going to have key right and then in, instead of uh, these rows we'll just have in info and here it will have name and the key is dash name and I've misspelled in info. Let's do that. Let's do the copy paste method here. Name, address, and phone. And our keys are the same sort of thing. Name, address, and phone. Let's delete this. Now that's a nicer looking layout, right? And we, we've not, it's not like we've lost a lot here. We, um, we know that this is a a user-defined element because it doesn't have an SG in front of it uh, and it's easy to find it's right there and when we run this it's um, going to crash of course because I'm sure I did something wrong let's see what we did the time is okay. 8 o'clock p.m. And, okay so what has happened is that I've left a comma up here and that's that's a really insidious kind of bug Okay, so now let's run this again, and this time we have our nice window, and it's got uh, a much nicer layout. We've got one place now to change. If we want to make this, say, 10, 
we've got one place to change instead of three places to change uh, and uh, it, it's much much better coding style overall we've, we've used in, an encapsulation there so the other thing that we're going to talk about here is generated layouts and it's sort of similar in a way right we're we're not going to use a traditional list of lists layout uh, instead we're going to build one so there are uh, several ways to do this in Python. Uh, one is to use uh, append to build a, a list. So we're using loops. The other will be using um, list comprehensions. So here uh, what we're building is a grid, a 5 by 5 grid of buttons. Uh, and there are a couple of things I want to point out in this um, uh, one is that the key that we're doing here is a tuple instead of a string I've seen so many programs where people have gone through jump through hoops to encode row column information into a string and then in their event loop they parse the string to get the info back the the important part here is that keys can be anything or, or just about anything. They can't be a list, but they can be a tuple. Uh, so what we've done here is created a 5x5 five five list by taking buttons and appending them to an empty list. So that gives us a row, and then we took the row and appended it to an empty list uh, so that we ended up with uh, a row of rows which is a layout I mean a list of, of lists which is a layout and then we used Python's addition operator to add a list onto our list of lists so we added on the OK and cancel button to the bottom of this layout. So this part up here is computed. This part down here is this addition. And I have here in comments a couple of things. One is that there is a section in the PySimple GUI documentation on generated layouts that goes through this concept at great length. And also talks about uh, user generated elements or compound elements um, so you can get it from the main documentation as well as this tutorial the other thing here is the list operators that are good to use when creating or working with layouts so one you've seen here which is that if you've got uh, this first one layout plus layout concatenation so let's say here that I've got uh, layout equals just some text this will take a plain layout and it's going to add another row onto the end that's easy enough the next uh, kind of layout list addition, addition stuff is that if you have a list and you add another list to it, then you'll uh, it it will add it as if it's uh, on the same row. So here is a row. Let me list our window. Here's a row. And it looks like it would start another row, but it's it's an adding. It's not a comma, so it's adding. So it's going to add to the same row that's there. And this will come in handy with list comprehensions. In fact, let's do a list comprehension right here. Let's say that I wanted to have six buttons after this. B is for button, by the way. 
and I, I tend to use the shortened abbreviations um, like text is T when especially when working with these list comprehensions kind of things so let's see we have for I and range of five so here we've got uh, a list comprehension and it's going to build a list of buttons and let's have the text be a number and when we run this we're going to see on one row some text and then five buttons so by using the addition here like this we're able to mix uh, normal elements with a list comp you know a generated elements using a list comprehension and it's on a single row versus it being on multiple rows hope that makes sense so that's the first two we have uh, one layout plus another layout equals a layout here one row plus another row is a row uh, list comprehension to generate a row which is what we just did right and then we can do list comprehensions to generate uh, rows of elements so let's do a list comprehension to generate a row of elements so here is uh, a list uh, a layout with just text and let's say that we want our layout to now have uh, rows of buttons instead of just buttons and that's where we're going to concatenate a layout and instead of the button being by itself we're going to have the button be on uh, a, a list by itself like that so this will generate uh, I gotta took off one too many of these I think hang on let me okay so uh, here we have our or original layout which has a single row of text then we're adding a layout that is a list comprehension that is a list of buttons so you see this is a, a button that's in, in a list and the list comprehension is making lists and then we're going to add OK and cancel to it so now when we run this we'll see our text at the top and then these buttons going down because they are on individual rows because they're each a list and at the bottom we have our OK and cancel so put together here it's a it's a very compact sort of layout even though um, there's a, a list comprehension involved and we're we're computing things so in, in list comprehensions you can have not just uh, a single loop but you can do nested list comprehension so here we've got a grid of buttons that we're going to make and let's take a peek at how this is going to work I'm going to put an extra space so that you can see that this right here is one list so that's a row and then the outer one is the overall layout so it's a list of lists right so we have on a row we've got three buttons and then we're generating four of those rows so when we run this we will see we have three buttons per column and we have four rows worth now notice the key is R and C for row column and so whenever I click a button let's say this one I've got a print here for event and values and the event that came back was one zero so row one looks like I got them numbered backwards <laughs> yeah I do <laughs> sorry uh, got my row columns swapped so let's switch this I think that's the way we want them and so that this is zero zero 
zero one zero two right so it's zero through uh, three and then zero through two pretty nifty huh so so you get end up with this nice grid uh, based solely on a single line of code uh, we talked about pad in a previous episode as well let's set the pad to zero zero for this and run it again so then it'll make our grid of buttons very tight you may find this handy to do uh, in like a uh, a minesweeper game or something like that okay uh, and then the last thing I want to show you here is um, a Sudoku game or at least a game board and that would that would be this line of code so when we run this what we get is this Sudoku board it's filled in with random numbers so they're not it's not a valid board but the, the point is that in PySimple GUI it's possible to take a single line of code and have it generate something that looks really nice and actually run it I mean it's it'll take input you know it's not like it's just a static image uh, and as soon as I hit the exit button or close the window this read will return but i um, digging in here for just a second this is our title this is our layout and it is a list comprehension of frames so this is a, a frame that has the line around it and within the frame there's a list comprehension happening of inputs so this uh, there's row call for uh, doing the input list comprehension and then there's an outer list comprehension that's doing F call and F row which I okay, for frame row and frame column so it generates these frames and then uh, I added on the exit button so these generated layouts are uh, really a, a place that PySimple GUI can shine it, it is so easy to make rows of buttons and, and use Python constructs like list comprehensions and apply them to GUIs and uh, you just can't do that with other GUI frameworks it's uh, I think unique to PySimple GUI uh, it was written in Python for Python and this this is the fun thing about Python is to to be able to do these kinds of things so hopefully you found this instructive uh, thank you for watching